dear friends, good evening to all of you. We are living in the very year we are, and uh, whatever we write together, I think uh, one thing we can never compensate. In fact, in our constitution, the Article 141, the Supreme Court can do full and effective justice. We don't have any such power. And one thing, what we will do, we can't say. What we can't do, I can say. I can't, I apologize to the mother that we can't do anything to you, mother. We only sympathize with you. And we are with you in your sorrow and your pity. But whatever we do, it is going to be something like a report for the future. Many of you may not know that students all over had a right to fight and they fought all over. It's not as if it is a crime or a sin for fighting for the cause of everyone. In fact, we were all belonging to the early 70s and we were in the streets most of the time. We were not in the classrooms. I have been rusticated three times. <laughs> Three days to get back to my house, right? <laughs> yeah. I have gone to jail ten times. <laughs> so nothing is wrong. When we became a student, we looked towards all over the world. In fact, in the early 70s, there was a Paris student uprising. There were students in America who were fighting. They were doing much more things what we consider now today is only a nothing. It's a pittance. In America, they captured the university. They captured the University Vice Chancellor's office. There it's called President, Vice President's office. In fact, in the early 70s, there was a pamphlet. Which is a pamphlet? They went to the university. They captured the VP's office. They got all the classified documents. They put it as a book. <coughs> Who controls Columbia? <laughs> the Columbia University was under the control of the student for 10 days. And they got hold of all the documents. How they were giving honorary doctorates, where they were getting money, which arms dealer is giving finance to the university. Everything is a matter of record. And that was a student. Today people say that you are shouting anti-national students. If you see the history of American students, in America there is a forcible army service is there, draft. You got to serve the army for two years. The American students said, why should we serve this army? Nobody questioned them as being unpatriotic. In fact, if you ditch the draft, you can be arrested in jail and many people are going to go into the jail uh, rejecting the draft. The cases were filed in American Supreme Court saying these people were all anti unpatriotic. The question was, America was fighting an unjust war and people said, why I should fight with you? Why I should fight with you against a small nation which is Vietnam? The American student walked in the streets of America supporting Vietnam, not the US Marine. <laughs> The U.S. Marine was killed every day. But then they did not support the U.S. Army because we are living in a world where anybody has a right to fight for a just cause and anybody has got a right to say, I will not serve this army. Don't think this kind of jigoism, this kind of so-called patriotism or patriotism being measured, whether you are having a, a flat mast of 207 not feet, <laughs> it is not proportionate to the height of the flat mast. So therefore, when we came in the early 70s, we were inspired by the student movement all over. And therefore, we also took the seats. There is nothing wrong in fact. Therefore, the question is not ultra-technical. Ultra technical. The question is whether we see, should invite the police after consulting X, Y, Z, whether student uh, should do this or do that or not. Today, the slogans which are raised are not relevant for any campus. We saw in IIT Madras, we saw in JNU, and we are also seeing in the University of Hyderabad. Last month I was here speaking in Hyderabad. I said that Rodi Tumela was gone, but then it has opened a fight for freedom, fight for social justice. I think our we are going back with a lot of inputs which can enrich our report, and I am sure we will also submit our report for your consideration. And it is nothing to do with any judgment. Many people ask, what is this tribunal? Some retired judge and two retired professors or one sitting professor. All over the world, when independent tribunals were constituted, people were originally looking with suspicion because it is not judiciary, it is not court. 
But then still, the concept of independent tribunal has been recognized world over because in many totalitarian regions, you can't look to the judiciary. You will have to have people who are having welfare in their mind to prepare a report, not for the dictatorship, for the whole humanity. Our report is for the humanity, not for the government, not for the government, not for the Our report is the people. We will go to the people. It is not a court. It is a tribunal. The tribunal is constituted by you. You elect us to give a report. And our report will be objective to the extent that is possible. And we will go with the report to all the people to seek for justice. So an independent tribunal does not design cases like in court. An independent tribunal takes note of the feelings, the suggestions, and makes some suggestion for a future. It is not for this. It is for the future that we are accommodating. And I am sure with this experience, and we will be able to prepare a good report. And uh, our uh, friend has given a long reference, and it will take long time to answer these references. To my mind, to the extent that I have involved in student movement, we were never succeeded in court that this police action is right or wrong. Because we were anti charged several times, we were arrested so many times, we were never gone to court and succeeded at all. Because this institution, this establishment, this status quo always looks down upon the students with suspicion. They want to depoliticize the student. They want to take away the right of the student. They want to make the student to go away from the cause of social justice, which suits the rulers today. That is most important. And therefore, we will not get freedom from them. We will have to take away the freedom from them. And there is nothing wrong in fighting. So, please don't be guilty that we went this. Because some of the posting that I saw in the Facebook closed down that university. Closed down this university. Yes. They are all producing anti notion universities. In fact, campuses are meant only to discuss matters. Campuses are meant only to enrich our knowledge of matters. Campuses are meant for a future training for our future leaders of this country. And I am sure, I am proud of your university. And I feel that what you have done is something to be proud of. And with that point, you should go and organize yourself in a better matter where something is went wrong. In fact, some of the people are saying that teachers, majority, minority. Actually, today's minority is tomorrow's majority. I was standing, I was standing before the Consulate General of America as one person shouting pro-Vietnam slogans. One person in the entire Madras city of 40 lakhs. One man shouting. People got mad. But ultimately, Vietnam won. Ultimately, people won. Therefore, this will be most important. It is a cost which matters. Which cost? Not minority or majority. And secondly, People are talking about how to convince the establishment. We can't convince the establishment. And coming from the judiciary, people talk about class prejudices. I will tell you, in our own judiciary, I know a Dalit boy who is a very brilliant boy. He wrote very well in the examination to become a Munsi. That's the smallest uh, judge's post. That is called Munsi. Now it's called Civil Judge Junior Division. Now when he went for the interview, all that he had to require only five marks in the interview. There are 15 marks for interview. If he gets 5 marks, he will be selected. The judge is one of the biggest caste person. He didn't want this boy to come in. So first question he asked him, who is your beloved leader? He said, Dr. Ambedkar. So the judge knows that this man is a trap. So he told him, not even Abdul Kalam. So the boy very bravely said that, Abdul Kalam came through an election by a political party's willpower. Here is a man who rose from the ranks and became the leader of the mass, which nobody can expect. And then this judge gave him zero mark in return. And he never became a civil judge. He came to me for a case. And I told him it's difficult to fight this assumption, to do well as a lawyer. And this is how we have caste filters, not only in the university. We have caste filters in the higher judiciary also. I can be the issue so many hundreds of incidents of caste uh, discrimination in the judiciary. And therefore, this is a fight not confined only to the campus. We are having a 1.2 billion people, one-fifth of the humanity in India is denied civic, political and economic rights. And therefore, our fight is linked to the fight outside. And it is a common fight for us. And we are very proud that we all come together for a common cause. Thank you. Sir.